Welcome everyone to the next video concerning simplifying square roots. Uh, this is the variables component of the Khan Academy exercise, so let's go ahead and get started. So we're asked to simplify uh, the square root, assuming that b is positive. I'm assuming that's what we're going to be doing with all the variables. So let's go ahead and get, head, uh, go ahead and get started. So uh, in last video, and I suggest that you watch it when we talk about simplifying square roots, we talked about two strategies for simplifying square roots. The first strategy was thinking of perfect square factors uh, of that number, okay? So for example, if we're looking at 80, we're looking at factors of 4, uh, 9, 16, 25, 36, okay? Which of those numbers goes into um, 80? And I'm thinking that 16 does. I think 16 times 5 will give us 80, and I think that's correct. So I could rewrite square root of 80, b squared, and I could split this radical up to be square root of 80 times square root of b squared. And we're going to talk about this variable in a little bit, okay? We're going to handle him second. First, let's kind of talk about what we did in the last video, which was talking about simplifying radicals. So I could split this radical up into two perfect squares, which is square root of 16 times square root of 5. Well, I know square root of 16 is 4, and this is going to be radical 5. But now I still have this square root of b squared in there. Now, there's two different strategies to do with uh, simplifying radicals with variables. The first thing you can do is you can do almost the exact same process as the factor tree method. So if you have b squared, you can break it down into its prime factors, which is b and b. Okay, it's b times b. Anytime you see a pair of something, it can leave the house, and whatever is by itself stays in the house. Well, there's nothing else by itself, so the b leaves the house and there's nothing else left. Okay, now I would never ever write it just like this because some people are going to accidentally extend their radical sign and your teacher is not going to know if that B is underneath the radical or outside of it. So I would always, always, always write it like so. 4B radical 5. Okay, so that would, that would, uh, that is how I would express my answer. So 4B radical 5. And let's check that answer. There we go. Okay, here's one more. Uh, this is the last one we'll end on. It's pretty simple, so we'll, we'll keep it uh, short. So let's say I don't want to use the perfect square factor method. And instead, I want to use the factor tree, so I will show you how to do that. So we're going to break it down into its prime factors. I like putting the prime factors on the left. So I know that's 2 and 36. I know that's 6 and 6. Oops, that's not a prime number, is it? I was kind of cheating because I know what it's going to be in a, in a second. But don't cheat. 18 and 2, 2 and 9, 3 and 3. Now I'm going to circle any time I have a pair. So I have a pair of 2s, a pair of 3s, and the 2 is home alone. So I can rewrite this. The 2 comes out, the 3 comes out, so I multiply it, and the 2 stays home. So I know that this is... 6 radical 2. Well, square root of 72, z to the 5th, I still need to deal with z to the 5th component. So how do I do that? Let's switch to blue. So z to the 5th, let's break it down into its prime factors. So I could write it as z, z to the 4th, z, z cubed, and you're going to see this is kind of redundant doing this. And as you get better, you're going to see that you don't need to use this factor tree. Okay. But I just want to show you where it comes from. And then Z and Z. So now I'm going to circle anywhere I have a pair. So I have a pair of Z's here. I have a pair of Z's here. And then one of these Z's needs to stay home. Okay. So this Z comes out. This Z comes out. And that Z stays home alone. So this is going to become Z times Z. Square root of Z. Or Z squared square root of z. Now I need to multiply both of these together. 6, six uh, square root of 2 and z squared square root of 2. So that is, oh sorry that's a z isn't it? Sorry. z squared square root of z. So then I have 6z uh, squared square root of 2z. Just wanted to make sure I got that right. 
Okay, so that's gonna be my answer. Now, what's a quicker way to handle that z, uh, the square root of z to the fifth? Well, I think the best method is to think of the largest power uh, that can be divisible by two. So when you're dealing with square roots, you're essentially dealing with uh, a rational exponent of one half. So z, square root of z and z to the one half is the same thing. So if you have a power underneath, let's say z to the eighth, and you're taking the square root of that, well, what you're doing is you're doing two operations. You're doing z to the eighth, and then you're raising that to the one half power. If you have a power to a power, you are multiplying exponents. So if you have an even index, which this one is two, essentially, an even index for the radical, and then you have an even power, then you're going to be able to simplify that further. So this is z to the fourth. Okay, you multiply. It's when you have something like z to the fifth that it gets a little tricky because you have z to the fifth and then you take that to the one half. Well, five over two is not simplified into an integer, so it's a little it's a little more tricky. Okay, but it's not too bad. Let me erase some of this over here. We'll keep the answer there so we don't forget. Okay, so. Let's, let's take z to the fifth. Now let's write it in a different way where we have a power that's divisible by two. So I can break z to the fifth down into components. And if I wanted, I could use z squared times z squared times z, but that's a little redundant. Why don't I just do z to the fourth times radical z? This is the same thing as z to the fourth to the one half power. And then I multiply those exponents power to a power, I multiply, and I get z squared. I can't do anything with this, so I leave it, and see how we got the same thing. It's a little quicker, okay? Now, of course you could do this, but I'm telling you, if you don't learn these rules of these exponents and how to reduce these variable radicals uh, a little more quickly, you're gonna be wasting a lot of time, okay? So it's worthwhile to spend some time learning rational exponents and um, making sure you understand how to to do that quickly, okay? So z, 6z squared, square root of 2z. 6z, I need a exponent actually. 6, oops, I see how it works. Okay, 6z squared, okay, square root of 2z. Okay, I hope you found this helpful. If you need another video on how to uh, simplify radicals inside uh, with powers and, and uh, rational exponents or anything like that, please let me know in the comment section and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.